gentlemen, salamu alaikum, hello and welcome to hashtag LNT, the final episode. Of not, not, no, not the final episode of hashtag LNT, but the final episode of season one is what I meant to say. Now, season two, inshallah, will be, uh, will be starting from next Monday, where you're going to have live shows every single night for 60 nights. I don't know how I'm going to do it, and I don't know how I adjust him, the co-producer and all the crew are going to do it. But you know, hard-working, dedicated individuals work at this channel. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, that, inshallah, we will bring you a second season of Hashtag LNT. Trust me when I say you don't want to miss out, especially, inshallah, without any technical difficulties occurring uh, during the show. Now, I just want to say welcome to another episode of Hashtag LNT, live from the holy city of Karbala with your favorite man, Ahmed Ali. Now, tonight um, is, is a very special night, the, 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 the last Saturday before we enter a very, very special month. I don't want to mention what, but let's go jump into what's trending and come back to you guys very soon. Once again, I would like to welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, for 150 years, homosexuality and same-sex marriage was a crime in India, but not anymore. India's Supreme Court has struck down a colonial era law that was imposed during uh, the British uh, rule uh, that penalized intercourse against the order of nature with maximum sentence of life imprisonment. So this was the punishment whoever um, engaged in that kind of activity. Now supporters of LGBT are, uh, you know, th they're going around India uh, and they're celebrating uh, that uh, the... Um, the Supreme Court has removed that uh, law, and now everyone uh, is. And, and now you can see half of the Indian flag is J the, the LGBT flag. Uh, so they're, uh, they're celebrating. So go ahead, go celebrate. Anyways, stuff Allah. Uh, anyways, let's go jump in. Ah, another one Chinese technology. One of the best and, and most uh, developing Chinese technology giant, Tencent, introducing is now introducing a, a new tough rule uh, to identify underage gamers amongst a crackdown on gaming ac uh, addiction in the country. Now from mid-September, they're going to start, start this where they need your full um, name and age uh, so they can register it uh, in a system uh, for its highly uh, popular uh, games uh, like the Honor of Kings and PUBG. Uh, for those who are playing PUBG now, you guys, in the mid of September, you're going to have the update. And from that update, you're going to have to put your name in. Now, this, and add me so we can play together. Uh, I'm, I'm 49. Uh, my level is 49. Uh, platinum, too, to be exact. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, uh, this will identify uh, the children and restrict the time they actually um, spend on that game. Now, the move is considered the first uh, to be among uh, in, in the world's largest gaming Market, so we'll see how that goes and how much the downloads increase or decrease. But let's go jump in to tonight's topic. Now, what's that time of year again where we're approaching the month of grief, the month of reflection, the month of sacrifice, the month of oppression? the month of determination and the month of the great battle. The month where the world commemorates the greatest tragedy in history and the martyrdom of great individuals and figures with an eternal legacy. The month that defined the word oppression. The month in which a day like no other day exists. The month of Muharram, the sacred month of Muharram. Are you guys ready? This is why tonight's last episode of the first season, we have dedicated it towards one question. And that question is, how do you prepare for Muharram? Very beautiful and simple question. How do you prepare for Muharram? That's your question for tonight. What you do with that question is very simple. You pick up your phone, open WhatsApp, and dial the number shown in three, two, 
one. Shown in three, two, one. Shown in three. Oh, all right. All right. So uh, I'm I'm gonna just tell you the number. Uh, just to call, insha I said we're not no technical difficulties, inshallah, uh, from next episode, not this episode. Uh, but no, I'm kidding. Um, we do apologize for that technical difficulty. But the number to call at is plus nine six four. Just jot it down. Plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Now I know everyone's anxiously waiting to see that phone number, uh, but it's been there for what eighty seven episodes now. So alhamdulillah, you probably guys have that memorized by now. Uh, but anyways, the number again is plus nine six four. Seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six, and let us know what you think about tonight's question. How do you prepare for Muharram? Let's take a quick break. Come back to you guys to talk more. Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now Tuesday, which marks nine eleven, um, is the beginning of the first month in the Islamic lunar calendar be, being Muharram, the first month being Muharram in the Islamic lunar calendar. Now, for those who don't know what Muharram is or the first time they hear about it, and when I said that it's the, the, the first month uh, of the calendar, right away they're probably thinking of a New Year celebration and stuff, but it's the total opposite of that. Muharram is the most lamented and most mournful mournful month across the year why some people may ask well i'll tell you guys a brief story of why muharram is the most lamented and mournful month across the year now the story of Muhammad hussein is a very tragic one many may know this already now it incites the feeling of empathy and sadness in people every time they listen to this story whether it be a muslim whether it be some someone falling from a different religion, different faith. Anyone that hears the story of Karbala automatically gets struck with empathy and sadness. Less than 1400 centuries ago, on the day of Ashura, which is another name for the 10th day of Muharram, Imam Hussein, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and pure progeny, was accompanied by his close companions and family members, including his children and and women now they were surrounded by thousands a huge army of thousands of people who had kept them deprived from the simplest thing in life which is water the essence of life they kept them away from that and deprived from it for three consecutive days in a desert called Karbala right behind me um, this is where Karbala happened and this is a, a, a illustration and as you can see, now imagine, now those, that small army on the left is the entire army of Imam Hussein. On the right, you see thousands and thousands of soldiers who are just gathered around the tents of Imam Hussein, trying to destroy everything that's in those tents. We'll get to talk about that, inshallah, in the upcoming episodes uh, when we reach the season of Muharram and the 60 episodes coming up. Now, although Imam al Hussein was killed in the Battle of Karbala, his message lives on, hence pronouncing his victory. It, would be, it wouldn't be an, an exaggeration to say that the passion and enthusiasm inspired by the martyrs of Karbala is something unsurpassed by any in the history of all religions. Now, no individual of any, no individual group of, you know, throughout history of the world has attracted and sustained such affection towards any individual or any group like the martyrs of Karbala and especially like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and his followers. Now he set an example for all religions. What example was that? Faith comes first. And that's important. And see how many people now, if, if, if you were to see what Arba'een has to offer, you can just go to IHTV3 on YouTube, Imam Hussein TV3, go to the playlists. 
and go to Arba'een playlists and you'll see what I'm talking about in Muharram as well. Millions and millions flock to the, war to the shrine of Imam Hussain and his loyal brother Abu Fadl al-Abbas. Why? Because of the values that Imam Hussain stood for. Now Imam al Hussein, the story of Ashura requires a whole series. That's why we had 60 episodes coming up for you. But it honestly requires a whole series of episodes just to talk about these three and to examine them thoroughly. But do we, we do remind everyone uh, of the question and we do apologize for the question not popping up uh, at the bottom. Only the phone number I believe is. Um, uh, the question is once again, how do you prepare for Muharram? Very simple question. Uh, I hope everyone can relate to it because everyone does celebrate the month uh, or sorry, does commemorate uh, the month of Muharram and everyone prepares for it differently. Now tonight, we want to see how we should prepare for this month. Everyone does prepare and that's great, but we have to look at how we should actually prepare for this blessed month. Now number one, we shouldn't wear black just because we're lamenting over Hassan salam. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that don't wear black and it's not good, absolutely not. Wearing black clothes is recommended. But we should also prepare ourselves for Muharram on the inside as well. You know, a lot of people might go, and, and it's, it's absolutely perfect if you want to do that, then go ahead. A lot of people wear black on the outside just to lament over Hassan salam. Yet they're doing the opposite of what, what the teachings of Imam Hussain alayhi salam are. So let's try, you know, it, it does start with a small and simple thing. Absolutely, it's beautiful that you're doing that. But at the same time, let's try, you know, every, every new year they say there's, there's a new year resolution. So let's try on this new year that's coming up in a few days. Let's try and change our moods change our mentality if it's a bad mentality change the way we behave towards individuals especially our manners towards individuals because if we were to examine the lessons as inshallah one of the topics in Muharram is lessons from Karbala and Al Hussein then we would get to know what kind of manners Imam Al Hussein used on the day of Ashura now the second way we should prepare for Muharram goes out to those who are living in the West. Also, all of them go, go, go out for those, but especially this one. You know, in the West, you're, you're most likely, if you work for a firm or a company, or have a lot of friends, you're most likely being invited to parties and weddings. Although the, the parties do have to be halal, no beverages, but you know, just in case you are event in, invited to, to, to a party, be strong enough and confident enough to tell them, you know what, this is the month of mourning and the month of, of where I and the entire Shia world commemorates the death of a very special individual. An individual that sacrifices life for me and everyone. Just like how in Ramadan, when they invite you to a banquet or to a dinner or to a lunch, just like how you say that you can't go because maybe, you know, because you're, you're fasting and this is Ramadan and, you know, we have to fast because this and this and this, say the same when it comes to the month of Muharram. You simply explain to them and they'll understand why because you're doing this out of your love for someone that stood up for the right thing you know now wh wh wherever you look wherever you listen to someone they say do the right thing do the right thing and imagine that someone who's telling you to do the right thing you go up to them and you tell them that you know what 1400 years ago less than 1400 years ago a man did the right thing and he sacrificed his life for humanity. Imagine what the response is going to be. Try that out and let us know. Another way you can prepare for Muharram is abstaining from any jokes or you know, cracking up jokes uh, and laughing. You know, although for a person like Ahmed Ali, you know, I'm, I'm always laughing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always joking around. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That's a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me. You know, but in, in the month of Muharram, we need to keep that down. Just like how I changed my mood right there, you know, I should be in a, in a, in a movie, you know, a movie star. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, this is probably like the, the last joke I'm going to say before Muharram. Uh, but we are talking about Muharram, so we can't crack any jokes. But we do remind everyone uh, of the question tonight. How of the hidden question, inshallah, will come out of the occultation very soon. 
uh, but the question is how should you prepare for Muharram? Let's get a loop of the question very soon. How do you prepare for Muharram? So we, the point we just left off is don't crack jokes, don't laugh too much uh, in, in, in Muharram. Let's show the question. How do you prepare for Muharram? Very simple question for you guys. Let us know. We got a text message. I will show it up uh, very soon, inshallah. Now, uh, another point as to how you can prepare for the month of Muharram is, you know, we have 24 hours during the day. How hard is it to dedicate 15 minutes to 30 minutes of your day? Dedicate it to what? Dedicate to one simple ziyarah. If you're living in the west, if you're living in the east. Half an hour, 15 minutes, trust me, I've tried this. 15 minutes. If you rush it, 5 minutes. But 15 minutes, if you actually take time and you ponder upon the words and stuff. No, not reading the Quran, although it's good. But reading ziyarat, reciting ziyarat ashura. One of the best things you can do during the month of Muharram and Safar. But how to prepare for Muharram? 15 to 30 minutes. Either ziyarat warath or Ziyarat of Mahatma Islam, uh, also known as Ziyarat Ashura. Now, number three, or number four, sorry, two, three, four, number five. The fifth way you can prepare for Muharram is a way where the angels envy you to the point where they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, What do we do with all these good deeds? He says, Put them in the scale of that individual who did what? who organizes a majlis in the name of Imam Hussein in his house. Let's repeat that. A person who organizes a majlis in his house for Imam Hussein alayhi salam is something honestly out of this world. If you don't own a house, inshallah, one day you will. If you don't own a house, even in a small apartment, do it wherever you can. But if these are not available, then the, the, the closest mosque or the closest Islamic center to you, go to them and tell them that, you know what, I want to host one day of Majlis of Imam Hussein in this center, in this Husseiniya, wherever you want. This is very important. We'll get to talk about a narration by Musadiq al-Islam very quickly. Speak to the caretaker of that mosque or center, and trust me, they'll love that idea. Especially if you're cooking food as well. They'll love that idea. Now, the sixth way you can prepare for Muharram is prepare an, an, an initiative. A lot of people, they have initiatives in their mind that they, that they establish throughout the year. That's beautiful. Keep that up. But establish an initiative during the month of Muharram. Where a lot of people are busy with, with and especially in, in Karbala and in Iraq, they have those. They call them awakib. In the West, we need to have processions. We need to have such things. Processions not walking in the street and blocking the street. No, 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 no. Processions on the sidewalk, have some benches, have some tables out where you're not bothering the, the, the people walking on the sidewalk, and give out water bottles. In this month, give out water bottles. This, this does happen throughout the year. But it's beautiful if it does happen right now. A water bottle with the name of Mamun Hussein on it. Explaining who is Hussein does that very beautifully. Mace in Canada, McMaster Al Bayt Islamic Society, they do that every year as well. Shout out to both of them. Now, the seventh way you can prepare for Muharram is very simple. From now, we only have two days. Tuesday is Muharram first. From now, sit and try to collect 10 or try to read about 10 things that Imam Al Hussein inspires you. If you can more, if you can read more, it's beautiful. But 10 things that Imam Hussein inspires you with. And post each one on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat, anywhere. Post one a day and you'll see the response of the individuals who will come towards Imam Hussein Mama Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him. But before we do that, uh, let's take the message that we got a few minutes ago. Uh, it's, it's been quite a long since you have received the message, but uh, Fatma Katla, no, no, Fatma from the UK. Uh, she says, I bring uh, the black banners from the closest, from the closet uh, and hang them up and hang them on walls 
my friend my friends come over and say what these are and I explain Muharram and Imam Al Hussein. Wow, that was tongue twisters all over. But thank you very much, uh, Fatima from the UK uh, for for sharing with us uh, how you prepare for Muharram. So your friends ask you what those are and you explain it. that's very beautiful. Now imagine if you can make it on a, on a broader scale and post it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, inshallah. Now uh, Mam Sadiq alayhi salam says a very beautiful narration regarding what we just said. He says, indeed, I approve of these greetings, of these gatherings, which are the majaz, the morning ceremonies. Revive our affairs, for verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon those who do so. Certainly, whoever participates in a gathering where our remembrance and affairs is invoked, his heart shall be alive on the day where all hearts shall die, the day of judgment. This is a very beautiful narration by Imam Sadiq. Whoever revives the name of Imam Al-Hussein, whether it's in a majlis, whether it's on Facebook, what's it in eulogy, poetry, anything regarding the message of Imam Al-Hussein, your heart will never die on the day where all the hearts die, aka judgment day. This is very beautiful. And this is what we need to keep in the back of our heads when we talk, when, when, when we remember how to prepare for Muharram. Now, Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi recommends us in his pre-Muharram speech that he delivered uh, a few days ago in Qum. And he says the following points. He says, we are on the thres threshold of the month of Muharram and Safar. We must prepare for the establishment of mourning processions and rituals in these two months as well as the performance of responsibilities as per our capabilities and capacities. That means that everyone should partake in those gatherings, in those processions, in those rituals. The young, the old, the rich, the poor, everyone eats from the same plate that Imam Hassan offers in Muharram and in Arba'in. So imagine what kind of unity Imam Hassan brings for everyone. So if you have thought to yourself of other ways of how you can prepare for Muharram, that's absolutely beautiful. You can do that. Be creative when you're trying to prepare for Muharram. Make everyone be attracted to Islam through the way of how you prepare for Muharram. Now if you, uh, if, if, if you um, do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as one sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, if you do do that, one of the greatest things that you'll get, you know, Imam Sadiq also says, the individual that spends one dime in the way of Imam Hussain Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply that by a thousand. You know, another way where you can prepare for Muharram, and this should have been done from the last Muharram until now, but it's good. You know, start now. It's better than never starting. Keep a small box that says Muharram on it. And each day you can put 50 cents, 25 cents, a dollar. If you're, if you're wealthy and alhamdulillah you have money, then put $10, $15, $5, whatever you can. Put it in that box. And when the next Muharram comes, you open that box and you see how much is inside. On that Muharram, feed the poor. Feed the poor. Feed the homeless in the name of Imam al-Hussein alayhi how many individuals out there that are homeless and that are poor? Millions, millions, trust me when I say millions of people around the world are homeless and poor. You don't have to cross cottons. You don't have to go to Africa or to Iraq or to Syria or whatever. Absolutely not. The individuals around you are more worthy of the good you do. So the, the homeless around you, the, the poor individuals around you, cook some food prepare some food with that money and serve it in Muharram in the name of Imam al Hussein. And you know, if you want to give them a small pamphlet of who Imam Hussain is, if you think that that's going to go in the garbage, then say it to them. Have 10 volunteers with you. Five is enough. Telling those homeless of who Imam al Hussein is. And that's what's beautiful about Muharram is that it unites everyone despite religion, despite creed, despite nationality, despite ethnicity and everything. Imam Hussain brings everyone 
under his banner. That's it for tonight, inshallah. We'll see you in the new season on Monday. That's it for tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.